Tim Baxter. So I'm going to be all over the place with this kit. The first thing I'm going to do uh, is to take apart the transmission and the axles here and get those greased properly and heavily. Uh, I'm going to go in with marine grease on any place that meets the outside and in the transmission I'm going to use red and tacky got those already loaded up in uh, syringe needles syringes so um, just pop these apart and get them greased up uh, preventative measure I've read that a lot of people don't grease them but I'm not going to take the chance because I plan on running this in water so that'll be the first thing I do So I got the first piece apart and it's full of grease. 32 pitch gears in there. Looking nice, but it's got grease in there. Um, I wouldn't say full, but it's got enough in there. I'm gonna boost it up a little bit and close her back up and do the same with the rest. But there is grease in there. I was told there's very little. It's not overflowing, but it's in there. So the transfer case has been greased and reassembled. Um, I put some Loctite on the six screws that are holding it together because there was none at the when I disassembled it. I put very little though. I didn't want to prohibit the screws from coming back out. So that's your transfer case. Next I'm moving on to the transmission. I'll we'll pop that open and get it greased up. The transmission has 32 pitch gears instead of the advertised uh, 48 pitch. I'm sure that's for durability. Um, just thought it was worth noting that it didn't have the 48 pitch like it said. So the transmission pulled apart not how I wanted it to. Um, it's in a couple pieces right now but I'll be able to get it back together it does have light grease not not a whole lot but probably enough to keep it moving for a little while but once again since I'll be running in water I'm gonna do a little extra lubing I'm going in with red and tacky again um, I'll put that all around each gear over here and then make sure I get the shifter and everything on the inside of this gear and then I'll put this case back together and Put some Loctite on these screws, just a little bit, but these have none, so I want to make sure they're Loctite. Got the transmission and transfer case uh, lubed and uh, Loctite, minimal Loctite again, uh, just enough to snug the screws. Now I'm going to move on to the axles. I'll start with the rear axle just so I can see how it comes apart and see how it's working. I'm going to lube this one with uh, marine grease around the ends and uh, possibly red and tacky once I get it open and see what it looks like in there. Uh, but I'll probably put red and tacky in the gears here in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it apart and see what I find. So I took the end cap off of the rear axle. It contains the pinion. It's trapped in there by this large E-clip. As you can see, there's plenty of grease in there. I'm just going to reinforce that with a little bit more. And I'm going to go ahead and take the top off and continue to see what's going on in here. So I got the top of the axle taken off. Uh, just not much to it. It's just the axle and it's not even a diff, it's just the gear kind of sitting on there. Um, not much space in the housing. I'm going to squirt a line of grease on there and reassemble this, but there's not a whole lot in there to kind of protect. Really beefy axle shafts right there. I do notice that. And a fair amount of grease on there as well. 
like I said, I'm just going to reinforce that a little bit and then get this closed back up and then move on to the front. Nice metal construction here. Got the axle shafts lined with grease and I'm going to shoot some more red and tacky in there. Um, once again, none of the screws had Loctite in them. So I'm going to dab just a bit of Loctite on there and put those on there. Not so that they're permanent, but just so that the screws don't vibrate out. And then I'll get the pinion greased and this axle will be back together and move on to the front axle. Greased up the rear axle and now on to the front axle to do the same thing. Um, this is a little different setup of course because of the knuckles. I'm gonna pop the knuckles out. Um, I'm sure there's no Loctite as usual as has been usual so far. And uh, so I'm gonna get the extra grease in there and get the screws locked tight. Started taking the axle apart already and uh, pulled off a super beefy hex on there. I got the knuckle off and inside is a a little dog bone stem. And that's what controls the steering. I always thought it was a universal up in there. So I'm going to get that greased up and drop back in there. Also got those little flange pieces, little top hats. Easy to drop out. So I'll set that down somewhere so I don't lose them. So I got the cap with the pinion off of the front axle. I'm pulling it apart. Notice that all the inside is not coated with the black, like the rear axle. I don't know if that's a miss or on purpose or what, but it's not coated. Also, while I was taking the screws out, some of the screws weren't tightened at all. Um, they were just in there, not even snug, just kind of in there. So definitely want to make sure you get your screws tightened. So anyway, I'm going to run grease in there, um, top and bottom, just like I did the rear axle. I'm going to ring grease along the shaft and red and tacky here on the gear and in the pinion. So I've got these axles lined with that marine grease, which is completely unnecessary, but something I'm doing for my water runs. Uh, eventually I'll have to take this out and change it or clean it up but it's good for now I'm going to set this axle shaft right down in that grease make sure I seat everything correctly you can see it's already starting to come out around the sides so I don't want to move this too much Got the top half greased as well. And so just sit that on top. And then I won't rotate this until I close it up. Um, and when I rotate it, it'll swing the grease around and coat all the insides. And hopefully go one step further to keep moisture out of there. Um, I'm also going to put a little dab of grease in that dog bone slot just to help things out a little bit and red and tacky in there to help the gears out just a little bit along with the pinion do all that and get this put back together um, also while I have the knuckles out I'm going to grease the little dog bone pin around the shaft put that back and I'll get these axles put back together. So now I start work on the chassis, which is mostly uh, screwing parts onto these two C frames. Uh, I need to lock tight everything on there. I'm gonna go ahead and get it all assembled and go through what it was like when I'm done. Chassis went together really quickly. Uh, got everything 
all the parts installed on there. Got a front shock hoop, um, leaf spring mounts, leaf spring mount, uh, plastic rock rails. I went ahead and installed the transfer case. Um, receiver box. Um, couple mounts for shocks and a couple more uh, leaf spring mounts. Uh, also, I had the body mounts where the screws go in for the cap and the body mount for the for the bed. They stick up through the bed. I probably have to trim those down after I get the kit belt. So now I'm going to install the transmission and get the axles built. I'm installing the leafs right now. I'm going to use two, two leafs. Uh, one medium and the large one. I'm going to use the medium to support this large one. I don't want it to bend up in the first couple runs. Uh, so I'm going to support it with the medium and hopefully that will do good. That's similar to the setup I have on a uh, on saw back so hopefully it'll work well here after that I installed the shock dampers which are pre-built and uh, made the belts moving along pretty quickly the chest is coming together in no time really easy build very very cleanly laid out and detailed for you so I'm attaching these leaves according to the way the manual asked to do it and I'm finding that the the nut is not being able to seat because of the flange on the on the axle if you can see the nut is sitting there crooked right now so what I'm gonna do is flip the screw around and put the nut on the top that helps me out anyway I'd rather have the nut sitting on top versus facing down and uh, that way the the top of the screw will seat right down in that hole really nicely so just a little switch uh, I don't know why the manual states to do it this way and it won't fit but I'll be flipping it over mm -hmm. 